the lighter for one thing, which makes it a lot easier when trying to carry it. So yeah, I switched batteries on the boosted board. I went back to the smaller battery, which was the one that originally came with it. It's lighter, it's easier to carry. I don't really need all the range that the big one carries. Small batteries also charge really quickly. So what these guys have done is basically use a really high power cell to create a small battery that can actually deliver a lot of power. And big manufacturers of like drill batteries and all that sort of stuff, they all use the same kind of idea. It's basically a battery that can deliver a huge amount of power, but be charged really quickly as well. Other advantages of this is you get massive power to weight ratios, which is needed for stuff that flies. These things have just got a ridiculous amount of power in just such a small package. Of course though, if you're going for something where you need maximum range, then you do need a bigger battery. There's just no way around it. You need to have something like energy density rather than power density. But if you've seen a lot of the builds that I do, most of them are kind of concentrated around power density. So you have a very small battery that can produce a huge amount of power and you're not necessarily worried about range or you know that kind of thing, the maximum amount of miles you need to travel. You just want to be able to get that energy out as quick as possible. Amps. This is where things have started to get really interesting in the lithium-ion battery world because we're seeing cells from Samsung which can deliver huge amounts of power, very close to lithium polymer. So it's kind of like, why carry around that massive battery? You know, we're seeing it on these electric cars at the moment. Huge, massive batteries, obviously they're big so that they can generate enough power to move, you know, their weight plus passengers and plus the, the amount of metal that the car takes, you know, but do we really need to have something that carries all of that fuel around in one go. This is where charging comes into it. The faster you can charge, the less need you have to actually have a bigger battery because you can just charge up quickly. The other thing is cost. This battery, which the charger's making a horrendous noise, I think there was a recall for that at one point. This battery probably only has 13 battery cells in there and that's enough to propel this with me on it up to about 25 mile an hour. I've got the scar to prove it. So next time you're thinking about an e-bike battery, do you really need the biggest one you can think of? Probably not. If you want to go miles and miles, how often do you really go miles and miles? That's the other thing. So maybe you could do it with a smaller battery, save a bit of cost, and actually maybe even build your own battery because it's a lot easier with less cells. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Shine